Welcome to the next video lecture for Introduction to Machine Learning. Now we'll talk about polynomial regression models, um, an extension of linear regression models. Um, so um, linear regression is nice, but um, in many cases probably it's not too realistic um, to assume that the features and the target variable are related by a simple linear function. The good news is that we can use everything that we already know about linear regression and make linear regression much, much more powerful and flexible by basically defining new additional features that we use in the linear regression that turn linear regression into something more flexible. And one way to do that, for example, would be to not just use the original features that we actually have observed, but also use polynomial transformation of these features. So don't just use the age, for example, also use the squared age and the cubic age um, so that your function becomes more flexible. Yeah? Um, and basically, here we're going to talk about polynomials. But that same idea um, also applies to any other transformation of your covariates that you can think of. So things like taking maybe the sinus of x, or also doing things like taking the products of different features um, and using those, yeah, so that you can have kind of like an interaction effect. So a new feature that is only big if both of these values are big, and that becomes small if one of these values is small. Yeah. Um, that, that immediately turns the linear model into a much more flexible thing. Yeah? But the easy part about the linear model, specifically for least square errors, the, all the optimization and risk and so on, they just remain the same. Yeah? So we're only changing the hypothesis space. Instead of linear functions that really only depend on the measured features that we actually have, now we also include linear functions of the derived features. So for example, if we're talking about only polynomial transformation, now we take the first d polynomials of the first feature. So we're taking x1, we're taking x1 squared, we're taking x1 to the power of 3, x1 to the power of 4, all, all the way up to the power of d. And each of these polynomial transformations also gets their own coefficient theta 1 1 theta 1 2 theta 1 3 and so on and so forth yeah and we do that not just for the first feature but we also do it for the second feature and the third feature and so on and so forth yeah so in terms of the mathematics this still looks like a linear model but now it's a linear model not just in the original feature it's a linear model also in the additional polynomial transformations of the original features yeah so how does that look? Well, for example, yeah, let's say we have data like that. Obviously, if there is a relationship between X and Y, this is not linear because here it goes down, then it seems to be going up again, and then it seems to be going down again. All right, so we need something more complicated. So if we fit um, a simple linear model to that, the, that model here indicated in purple doesn't really fit the data really well. Right? But what we can do is we can make the linear model itself more expressive by using a linear model that also includes the polynomials of our feature. So, for example, let's say we add a polynomial of the fifth degree. So our features now are not just x. They're also their x, x squared, x cubed, x to the power of 4, x to the power of 5. If we do that and we fit the linear model and then we plot um, that model again as a function of x, yeah, we get this. And this, I think, now starts to look better. Yeah, it, I mean, it has this, okay, first it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes down again, and then ah, it even goes up again. Yeah, so that it's, it's slightly closer to the data already. So, and now let's go crazy. Yeah? Let's not just do the first five polynomials, let's do the first 25 
polynomials of x and see how a linear model um, looks like that. Okay, well, so this gives us a pretty crazy function. But if we look at this, this function for many of these points is actually much, much closer to the data, yeah, especially here and here um, and here, where it basically interpolates the data, than these other two functions. Yeah. So as we increase the complexity of the model by including more derived features, we are able to find functions in that now much larger hypothesis space yeah, that actually seem to correspond to the observed data fairly well. Yeah? So this is good, right? Um, th there's a problem here though, a problem that's maybe not entirely um, obvious to somebody who's, who's new to machine learning. The problem is this, the more complex the models that we look at can become, the higher the danger is that we are doing something called overfitting. And overfitting means that the model space contains functions that are so complex that they're basically able to interpolate the training data arbitrarily well. So we can, we can if, if we increase the amount of polynomials, for example, further, eventually we'll have something that is very, very wiggly that just goes through all the different points. Yeah? So it's perfect, it's a perfect fit on the training data. But the thing is, you always have random noise in there somehow. And if the model is so complex that it can adapt to every little wiggle in your training data, it's very likely to pick up not just the true structure of the association between the features and the target variable, it's very, very likely to also pick up all the little random noises and wiggles that you don't want. And if you then use that very complicated and wiggly model to predict on new data, it won't do so well. We call that it doesn't generalize well, yeah, because it has on top of all the true structure that might be in your training data, it has also learned all the random noise and then it applies that to new data and that just doesn't work very well. Yeah, so overfitting, that's a very, very important term in machine learning and we'll talk about that much, much more later on, but it's important to basically introduce this concept early on so that you are aware of that problem. Let's, let's look at how that actually looks like. So um, here's our training data. Yeah, we have our model of uh, with five polynomials here in blue and our model with 25 polynomial terms here in green. And on the training data, that more complex model seems to fit, well, better, certainly, than the blue model. Now, we generate a bunch of new data from the same uh, distribution and then we can look at how these models fit to the test data. And now you can see that actually the simpler model does much better in terms of how it generalizes to the test data than that more wiggly model, which is just very far off the center of that data cloud um, here and does completely crazy things, for example, here and here and here. Yeah. So because it has picked up all the little, little random wiggles that are in the original data. All right. That's it for polynomial regression. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, goodbye.